We start tonight with a professional snooker player who wants to tell one show viewers about an experience with addiction that's not only affected his career but also his personal life. Yeah, well, Neil wasn't hooked on drink, he wasn't hooked on drugs or gambling. My name's Neil Robertson. I'm a world champion snooker player. I'm an online computer games addict. I'm five months sober. Two years ago, the 2010 World Snooker Champion Neil Robinson won the UK Championship, adding to his impressive list of titles from the Masters to the China Open. But he was hiding a secret addiction from his fans. I was playing computer games online all night. I was winning major competitions, but inside, I was struggling. I couldn't stop, even though I wanted to. Millions of people in the UK play computer games on the internet. For the vast majority, it's a fun pastime. But academic research suggests up to 11% of players could be considered compulsive gamers. So I've come to meet 35-year-old Neil to see how gaming has affected him, his snooker game and his family. Neil, Kevin. Hey, How's it going? Yeah, not too bad, you? Neil started gaming when he was 18 years old and gradually it took over his life, sometimes playing up to 18 hours a day. I'd start playing the games with... Maybe all the intention was just to play for an hour and a half or something like that, and then I'd, I'd head off to the club and, and go to practice snooker. Problem is, if you're a super competitive person, you know, I can't walk away from the computer with a defeat. I've got to get on a good winning streak before I can leave the house happy and then go to practice. What was that like for you, Miller? The weirdest part for me was that you lost kind of um, reality with time. It's like, um, like a gambler trying to finish on a win or, some, or, or get a really good winning streak. If I disturbed him yeah, yeah. and I'd be like, hello, and he would be, what is it? I don't think Neil realised at the time the effects it had on everyone else around him. When Alexander was first born and I was meant to be on feeding duty at, at night time and I thought, oh great, I'll just like play some games. So I put my headphones on, I'm playing this game probably like 2.30 in the morning or something like that. The next minute I can just feel somebody behind me and it was Miller holding Alexander because he was crying in his cot and I, I just didn't even know. At the height of his addiction, Neil would lock himself away from his family in his man cave. This is where it all used to happen. A room that only he knew the entry code to. How long would you spend here in a day? And I'd be playing for like 18 hours straight and to me it would only feel like three hours. And the next minute I know you know, like the birds are tweeting outside and it's starting to get quite light and the, the sun's coming through and I'm thinking, oh my God, I've, I've got to go to bed. <laughs> it was last year when Neil was knocked out of three consecutive tournaments in the first round that he realised his addiction was affecting his ability to play snooker at the highest level. It was only then he took the decision to give up gaming completely. Luckily, I can just come in here now and, and, and it's no problem. I don't have to sit down... Um, play games, but it's taken many years to, to get to that point. I'm keen to know whether it's the games themselves or Neil's personality that's driving his addiction. So we've come to Neil's local snooker hall to meet up with Steve Pope, a psychologist and addiction specialist who works with professional sports people. Can you become addicted to gaming? Yeah, the human brain's got the capacity to addict to anything it finds pleasurable. With Neil being a perfectionist, is he vulnerable to attack? From addiction like like the games i see the game station as something that will not cause addiction the problem is your personality if somebody's driven ocd the will to win obsessive fair play to neil steve he, he stopped so that's got to be a good thing hasn't it that's great it's great but the, you know it's like in any addiction the easiest part is stopping and the hardest part is maintaining the stop one question the room the man cave, why don't you let that go? I guess at first it was kind of like a room where I could kind of go to and have like, you know, like all my trophies and all that sort of stuff there as well, as well as that. To cut that tie is the hardest thing because you're thinking, well, if it just does go wrong, I've got me back up. For me, get rid of that room, change everything, eradicate those memories. With his gaming habits under control for now, Neil and his wife Miller are turning their attention to six-year-old son Alexander who has already started playing video games. Okay. Miller's worried because I think that she's seen what happened to me and definitely mm. doesn't want that to happen to Alexander, and neither do I. But it's also dangerous for parents that we're both so incredibly busy, so it's very easy to fall into that trap of, you know he's going to be so well behaved and quiet for a good hour if he's allowed to play this or that or whatever. 
Neil is keen to understand how parents can strike the balance between pastime and obsession, but believes the games makers themselves could be doing more. Let's see what they have to say when we go to the Norwich Gaming Festival to meet them and other gamers. I played for 24 hours straight. The prize. Oh, such a famous face from well, the I world know it's of Well, I know it's a shock. You would never, never have known. Well, Kevin will be back tomorrow with the second part uh, of that film.